You're relaxing at the beach when suddenly you notice a huge flock of birds. They're excited about something near the water. You get the urge to go and investigate what's going on there. Here's some advice. Sit back down and stay away from the water. I get it, you think you're tough enough to handle a few pecks from a seagull. But it's not the birds that have me worried, it's what's lurking beneath the water. Fish are a staple of many diets across the animal kingdom, both above and below the ocean. Tuna, squid and octopus, as well as marine mammals like seals, all prey on a wide variety of smaller fish. Species such as bluefish and striped bass are their favorite dinnertime meal. They're also the favorite of another ultra predator, which is why you shouldn't join those birds by the water. If you do, you're risking an encounter with a creature that can measure up to 20 feet long. That's three times the size of an average human. These are the size credentials of a great white shark. If there are fish around, they may come up near the ocean surface to feed. A great white shark has the strongest bite force among animals. The only other animal species that comes close to them is the saltwater crocodile. And boy is their ability to catch whiffs strong. Scientists believe it to be more than 100 times stronger than a human's. They don't even use the nostrils located beneath their snouts to breathe. It simply serves as a specialized sniffer. Thankfully though, we're not the favorite meal of a shark and the creature isn't going out of its way to hunt us. Researchers claim that the odds of being attacked by a shark are as low as 1 in 3.7 million. When unfortunate meetings between sharks and humans do happen, a shark may mistake a human for a seal or an extremely large striped bass. This is why you should stay away from those birds and fishes and just let the other animals animal. You just focus on catching a tan in that sun chair. So, I guess this means that sharks have poor vision? Not quite. Their vision in clear water is up to 10 times better than that of humans swimming in the same environment. The structure of a shark's eye is quite similar to that of our own. It consists of a cornea, lens, retina, deep blue iris, and the pupil. Their eyes have two types of photoreceptors, rods and cones, just like humans. Although we're not too sure how well rods and cones perform for sharks, research has shown that they possess only one type of cone. It means they most likely don't have full color vision like a human. This might explain why they can sometimes mix humans up with other creatures. But hey, who's ever really fully focused when they're about to devour their dinner? Shark eyes also have tapitum lucidum. This is a layer of mirrored crystals located behind the shark's retina. These crystals allow the shark to see quite well in extremely dim light and murky water. The crystals reflect incoming light, which gives the rods inside the retina a second chance at detecting light that they might have missed the first time around. Fun fact, cats also have tapitum lucidum. This is why your cat's eyes glow in the dark when you shine a light on them. Another telltale sign that sharks may be hovering around in nearby waters is the presence of whales. Sharks have been known to stalk the creatures for over 100 miles. They'll follow pods waiting for one of the members to become vulnerable before expertly striking. So, lesson learned? If you now see birds by the water, it's probably not a good thing, unlike when you see thousands of birds flying together through the sky. This is known as murmuration. You can see thousands of starlings unite together in the sky, moving in unison, dipping and swerving at the same time. It's like they're competing in some sort of synchronization event at the Bird Olympics. This happens when the birds begin to roost. It can be as early as September in some places and as late as the end of November elsewhere, with more birds joining the nightly displays during this time. Are they doing it for our entertainment? Well, not really. Grouping together in the sky offers protection from predators, like falcons. It can also get cold when you're flying that high up. So, the birds gather in their thousands to keep warm and exchange information on potential feeding sites. Okay, so in this case, a huge group of birds doesn't mean anything evil. But if you ever see some flying towards you whilst in a wooded area, it's probably time to leave the area. 
birds and other animals flee wildfire areas. Certain mammals, like amphibians, may actually stay in the fire. Instead of fleeing for their lives, they will dig underground to escape it. But nearly all other animals will try their best to leave. Oh, and don't forget to jump out of the way whilst all those animals are running towards you. Why don't we switch back from birds to sharks? Yes, we now know if there are birds near the ocean surface, then sharks will probably be quite close as well. But what if there are no sharks anywhere near at all? If you ever happen to be in the ocean and notice some sharks heading deep towards the bottom of the ocean, this may be a sign that a hurricane or a tropical storm is on the way. Sharks can sense the drop in barometric pressure that accompanies the storm, so they could be trying to get out of the hectic zone. Sharks don't quite care for humans, so they don't view our sandy beaches and inland towns and cities as safety zones. They're quite intelligent creatures and know the deeper they go in the ocean, the safer it gets. But the ocean's not always the best place to go in an emergency. Case in point, if you come across sea creatures who usually live in water randomly resting on the sand, don't get inside the water. This is a sign that the water is potentially toxic. It's possible that a red tide is congregating in the water near the beach. Red tides happen all over the world, but one algae species causes them in the Gulf of Mexico. A red tide occurs when the water is full of more toxic algae than normal. It can make the water reddish or brown, but sometimes the water's color is normal. If you go in the water, you might experience respiratory irritation like coughing or an itchy throat. If this happens to you, you should thoroughly rinse your mouth with fresh water. Speaking of water, frogs are famous for their croaking, but if you've ever heard them do it a lot more than usual, it might be because it's about to rain. One theory says that this might have to do with their mating. They first do it, then lay eggs in bodies of fresh water. A good rain means more watery real estate for the frogs. That's why male frogs invite the ladies for a date before the showers with a croaking symphony. If you hear a lot of buzzing around, meaning the bees are more active than usual, a storm could be on the way. When they feel like it's approaching, bees start working even harder and faster to collect more nectar before the storm. And once they're done with it, they'll always come back to the hive 10 to 15 minutes before the heavy rain even when there are no obvious signs of it. Their secret is super sensitive hairs on their back that can pick up electrostatic buildups from storm clouds. <laughs> That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.